there is really not very much negative to say about this at all, but I do think the thing with Coban wanting his money back really didn't pay off. It makes sense, I completely understand his frustration, you know, he probably worked forever to raise 500 euros, and then he loses it because of this other kid, you know, but it just didn't pay off. I mean, let's say that the payoff was supposed to be he smacks Balil twice, you know, he, or punches him, you know, that was kind of it, and that really didn't lead to anything. I mean, when it happened, I thought that maybe Balil would be incarcerated as, you know, part of a fight, you know, even though he didn't start it. But that didn't happen, and then he was just driving with the Frenchman. Nothing really came of the two punches, and the movie just spent too much time on it. I don't have a problem with bringing up that one of these people reacted by saying, you know, you cost me a lot of money, I want it back, but he kept showing up. He showed up two or three times just saying, you know, I want my money. And, it, like I said, it didn't lead to anything. I was actually slightly confused when he was suddenly in the Frenchman's car, because honestly, for a little bit, I thought that he was the person being dragged across the sidewalk, you know. But then the camera pans over and we see him there. I don't know, I guess to make us realize, you know, for a second we thought that was Balil there, and then we were like, oh no, Balil is being dragged, and then we find out he's in the car, and, you know, maybe that sort of makes us realize that's another human being, you know, there being dragged across the sidewalk. Of course we should care about him, you know. We don't know if he has done anything to deserve that kind of treatment. Anyway, I was a little confused about, about how he was in the Frenchman's car, because he didn't have a cell phone, he couldn't have called him or something, but it was, of course, that other immigrant who came up saying, you know, who's, which one of you is Balil? He was, you know, he had just been asked by Simon, go find me Balil, and, you know, I thought the, um, the thing with Mira's father, you know, marrying her off to a rich cousin was really, really devastating. It, it was completely realistic. That sort of thing happens, and, I mean, we only see Hassan the one time, but he's at least 15 years older, maybe 20 than Mira, you know, and that's it, you know, he's already in London, he's got money, he's part of the family, so they know him, they, you know, and that just really, and, and it showed up in the story at the exact right moment, because it was the ticking clock of the third act, suddenly, Bilal had a very definite time frame. If you don't make it here soon, Mira will be married by the time you make it to London. At first, I wasn't entirely sure if there was a specific reason for why Mira's father couldn't know about Bilal. I thought that maybe there was something between the families, or that maybe he wasn't a Kurd, you know, maybe he was, uh, maybe he was Turkish instead, or maybe they had, you know, maybe one of them was Shia and the other was Sunni, but I believe it was just that he wasn't rich, and a Muslim father a conservative one, certainly, is going to be very suspicious of any boy who's interested in his daughter. I thought the cutting to Bilal making a second swim 
across the channel was really, really powerful. It was, it really still felt like, you know, will he actually be able to, you know, it, I mean, if, if you stop to actually think about it, even if he had made it all the way over, found Mira, I mean, what would have come of it? I mean, she would have had to, like, try to run away from, you know, maybe when she was out, you know, with her mother or something. She couldn't escape the father, and she was always with one of the others. They kept a very close eye on her, close watch on her. But as you see him there in the channel, you just really hope he makes it. It's... and then you find out he was 800 meters away. It's just it's truly devastating. Part of me doesn't really want to make any possible jokes about this movie at all, but when Simon suddenly disappears for two days, goes to London to talk to Mira, I can appreciate the gesture. But if he was offering himself up in order for them to not go after his ex-wife, who, whose name I don't remember, and possibly close down the soup kitchen, then isn't it a little selfish of him, just a little bit, to disappear for two days? I mean, couldn't they decide to, you know, go back on the deal and go after her? And I just have to say, this movie really got to me and is really bothersome that this is actually going on right now and that it's so much the fault of several Western countries. Iraq didn't need to be invaded. There wasn't any imminent danger. And now we have all these refugees and some of the countries that are to blame for there being all these refugees aren't accepting the refugees or are mistreating them as seen in this. I mean, writing a number on the hand, what is this, Nazi Germany? That's the kind of thing that should only happen today on like convicts in America, you know, people who have murdered someone, raped people. That's not the kind of thing that should happen to someone who tried to sneak across a border. He wasn't carrying anything illegal. The only thing he did was try to get across a border, and he had to do it illegally because they wouldn't let him do it legally. I hear that Sweden actually has very lenient laws for immigration and they did not participate in the war. I'm pretty ashamed of Denmark having participated in the war. Big part of the blame goes to Anas Fogh Asmussen, the current Secretary General, or whatever it's called, of NATO. He just wanted to suck up to Bush, make sure he had an international career, you know. Some people are cynical like that. I, I suppose that's about it for this. I just hope a lot of people watch the movie and that it can help change some minds because I think as long as people remain silent about this, then it isn't going to change. Too many people are afraid of 
Muslims ignoring the fact that, I don't know, isn't it like 10% that are, you know, radical enough or, you know, to commit any kind of terrorist act? That actually means that, you know, 90% of them aren't. That means that if you meet 10, 9 of them are statistically going to be Yeah, I think that's it for this one. Yeah. Those are my thoughts on Welcome from 2009. See you next time.